Year 9, set notation and Venn diagrams, probability calculations using Venn diagrams. So we're going to start off by talking about sets and identifying the notation that we use when we write down information about sets. A set, to give it a very simple definition, is simply a collection of items. And quite often in maths, we deal with sets of numbers. For instance, we have here the set of integers, whole numbers between 1 and 12, a very simple set. Now, we can write this using specific mathematical notation. Here, you see the Greek letter xi, which denotes what we call the universal set. So, in our example, the universal set is the full set of numbers within our set, which is all of the numbers, the integers, between 1 and 12. So, to identify that we're talking about the whole set, we use this symbol here. Now, these brackets here, these curly brackets, are actually very important. If we're identifying a set, we need to use that set of brackets. We can also define part of a set, which we call a subset. So, for instance, we've got the subset A, which refers to multiples of 2 from our original set. So A is equal to the set of numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. B is another subset of our original set. It's multiples of 3 from our original set here. And so B is equal to the set of numbers 3, 6, 9 and 12. Subsets are themselves sets because they're simply a collection of numbers or a collection of items from our original set. Now, we can represent this information very neatly using a Venn diagram. So sticking with the same example, let's have a look at what we've got. Now, our Venn diagram repre is represented by a rectangle, which represents everything in our set. So all of the numbers between 1 and 12 must be featured within the rectangle. And of course, we have two overlapping circles, which represent the subsets A and B. The symbol here, xi, shows us that everything within our universal set is contained within this Venn diagram. Now, you'll notice that there is a section of overlap in between the two subsets. So this will contain any items that are in set A and in set B. So that refers to 6 and it refers to 12. So they belong here in the intersection or the overlap. The rest of the items in A, which are 2, 4, 8 and 10, will belong here. And the remaining items in B will belong in here. The only thing left to do is identify the numbers that are neither in A or in B, which is 1, 5, 7 and 11. And they can be placed anywhere in the outer part of the Venn diagram. Now, what do the different parts of a Venn diagram actually mean? If I want to refer to the objects that belong in set A, well, that refers to not just this part of the Venn diagram, this part of the Venn diagram as well. It doesn't matter that we're including items which are in B, the key thing here is that we're looking for items which are in A, regardless of where else they may be. Similarly, if we want to refer to the objects in set B, that's everything contained within that circle. Earlier we talked about the intersection, the overlap between A and B. So that refers to items in A and in B. And we can write that as A, and then this symbol here, and then B. And this symbol here refers to the overlap, and it's called the intersection of A and B. It's very, very strict. You have to satisfy both conditions. We have to be in A, and we have to be in B. A slightly different situation is if we refer to A or B. 
In maths, we write that as A union B. So this symbol here refers to what we call the union of A and B. What's interesting in maths is that the word or has a very specific definition. It means items that are in A or B or items that are in A and B. Now, what does that refer to? Items in A, items in B, and items in both of them. So it refers to everything in the content of the circles. So everything in the Venn diagram, excluding the exterior portion outside the circles. Let's look at some other examples. If I write an A with a dash, this means not in A, so any items not in A. So that refers to these items here in B, but not in A, and also the items in the exterior portion of the Venn diagram. We can combine some of these ideas. I can write A dash intersection B. So that means items that are not in A and they are in B. So it's very, very strict. Remember, they can't be in A, but they must be in B. So that only refers to this part of the diagram here. A dash intersection B dash items that are not in A and not in B at the same time. So that refers to everything in this portion of the Venn diagram. And lastly, a more complex example, A dash union B, an interesting one. So this very specifically means not in A, or they could be in B, or they could satisfy both of these conditions. Unions or or situations tend to be much broader. So not in A, that refers to everything shaded in red. We've seen that before. But we could be in B independently of anything to do with A, which means we have to shade in all of this as well. And then the only other option is both of these conditions, which is not in A and happening to be in B, which we've already actually shaded. So everything that's currently shaded refers to the original example, A dash union B. That's quite a complex one. It might be one to keep coming back to and looking at this idea. With all situations or unions, you can shade one condition and then shade the other condition on top of that and you will end up with the correct overall result. So we're going to do an example of calculating probabilities using a Venn diagram. Have a look at this example. You can have a go yourself at filling in the Venn diagram and then see if you got the answers correct. There are 28 people in a class. 12 of them play hockey. 19 of them play tennis and seven play both. So straight away, the seven people who play both can be presented in this portion of the Venn diagram. Now, 12 people play hockey. It would be extremely wrong of me to put 12 here because the 12 people that play hockey represent everyone in this blue circle. So the correct answer is of course five. So the five and the seven together make up the 12. 19 people play tennis. So the total of this circle must be 19, which means I need 12 here. There are 28 people in the class. If we add five, seven and 12 together, we get a total of 24, which means there must be four people outside the circles who do not play tennis or hockey. We're now going to use the Venn diagram to calculate the following probabilities. You need to sketch a diagram to represent each of these and shade on your diagram which part of the Venn diagram you are referring to. The answers will come up in a minute. If you're feeling confident, do the questions and then check your answers afterwards. 
If you feel like you would like to work through them together, then play the rest of the video, but challenge yourself. Have a go at the questions first of all, and then check the answers. It does not matter if you are wrong. You can go back, figure it out, and correct it. So we are working out the probability that a person selected at random plays hockey. So there's the notation, you've seen this before. If H is the event that somebody selected at random plays hockey, then P brackets H means what is the probability that this person plays hockey? So we're referring to everybody here. That's 12 people out of the 28 people in total, which simplifies down, of course, to three sevenths. What is the probability that they play tennis? Well, that refers to the 19 people out of 28, which does not simplify. The probability that they do not play hockey. So that refers to these people and these four people here. So that's 16 out of 28, which simplifies down to four sevenths. Notice that's one takeaway, the three sevenths, which of course was the probability that somebody did play hockey. The probability that they do not play tennis. So that refers to everybody here and here. So that's nine out of 28. And again, that's one takeaway, the 19 out of 28 people who did play tennis. What is the probability that they play hockey and tennis? So of course, that refers to the intersection. So that's seven out of 28, which is a quarter. The probability that they play hockey or they play tennis, which also means they could play both. So that's everything in the union of hockey and tennis. So that is 24 out of 28, which simplifies down to six sevenths. They do not play hockey and they do not play tennis. So that simply refers to these four people. So it's a probability of four twenty-eighths, one seventh. They play hockey and, remember that's strict, they do not play tennis. So they must play hockey, but they cannot play tennis. So it refers to this region here. The probability is five out of 28. They do not play hockey and they do play tennis. So again, it's strict, it's an and condition. So we want to look for everybody who does not play hockey, but they do play tennis. That's simply 12 people out of the 28, which of course simplifies down to three sevenths. Lastly, given that the person we pick plays tennis, they also play hockey. Now, there's an interesting symbol for this, which you'll notice on the right hand side. You're not expected to know about this until you actually study some A-level maths, but it is interesting. It's something we call conditional probability. So this vertical symbol here refers to the idea that we know that T has already happened. So we would call this a conditional probability, the probability that H occurs given that T has already occurred. So we know that we are only picking from the people who play tennis. So we're not picking from 28 people. We're picking from 19 people. Of those 19 people, we're picking or aiming to pick the ones who like hockey. So the answer is 7 out of 19.